They hung 155 points on the Pacers, the second most points in a game in franchise history. But here's the deal. The Celtic starters, they have been absolutely dominant this season. Look, They are just overwhelming teams with talent. The deepest, most talented team in the league. And, and certainly this is a Boston team whose championship window, not just this year, but going a few years forward. They yeah, they might be. Actually, let me just go ahead and say this. They are the best team in basketball, top to bottom. 13 players. I've seen enough. The Boston Celtics are going to win the 2024 NBA Finals, but I feel like we've been saying this for the last few years or so. In 2023, the Celtics were the front runners to win the Finals, only to lose to Mr. Postseason himself. In 2022, the Celtics finished as the two seed in the East, but lost to the Warriors in the Finals. In 2021, the Celtics had the fifth best preseason odds to win it all, only to get mopped by the Big Three in Brooklyn in the first round. In 2020, they once again lost in the Conference Finals to the Man himself. And in 2018 and 2019, the Celtics had top three preseason odds to win it all both years, and of course they didn't. So it really begs the question, if some of the best odd makers, data scientists, and betting agencies can't even predict the NBA Finals right, what are they forgetting to factor into this equation of championship persona? The Celtics are the front runners once again to win it all this year. Are the C's once again gonna go into their playoff form and shit their pants once Jimmy Butler arrives? Or will this actually be the year the Celtics overcome the championship obstacles? put in their path. Disclaimer, this is going to be a long video with a lot, and I mean a lot of stats involved. So if you're not into all of that and you just want to hear me rant, go save about 25 or 30 minutes of your time and click off this video. Now for all the basketball intellects still here, enjoy. NBA odd makers suck at their job. These people make thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars just to consistently get the NBA finalists wrong. In 2023, the Boston Celtics were the frontrunners to win the finals, sitting at plus 500 odds. The Denver Nuggets, who actually won it, were given the ninth best odds in the league to win it all at plus 1,800. And the Miami Heat, who made the finals, had odds of plus 1,600. What are these guys doing in Vegas? In 2022, the Brooklyn Nets had the best preseason odds to win it all, only to get swept by the Celtics. The odds makers also guessed wrong in 2021 and in 2020 and definitely in 2019. As a matter of fact, the NBA odds makers have guessed the NBA finalists wrong for five straight years. Mind you, the team highlighted in red are the projected preseason winners, and the team highlighted in green are the actual winners. The last time that the preseason odds were actually right was when the Splash Brother Warriors were healthy and in their prime in 2018. When looking at the odds makers' guesses from the last 25 years of NBA basketball, they've guessed the correct finalists nine times, putting them at 36% which honestly isn't even that bad considering their predictions came without seeing them play a single regular season game. But when you actually look at it closer, most of these odd makers' correct guesses were from super teams. Teams like the Splash Brother Warriors, LeBron and D-Wade Heat, and Kobe and Shaq Lakers. But it's easy for us to yap about how wrong these odds makers are looking at this in retrospective. How about we look at the odds they came up with right before the postseason, right around when you're probably watching this, April 1st. Of the historic April 1st NBA Championship odds, I was able to find them dating back as early as 2010. Last year in 2023, the Milwaukee Bucks had the best championship odds on this date, sitting at plus 275 and they lost in the first round. In 2022, the Phoenix Suns had the best championship odds on April Fool's Day at plus 300, but Luka Doncic had other plans. Of the 14 seasons I was able to track, do you want to guess how many times the odds makers guessed the correct champion? Six times, putting them at a hair under 43%, which is actually really good. But once again, the teams that they guessed right just so happen to be some of the greatest dynasties of the modern NBA. When looking at a year without the name the Splash Brother Warriors or Miami Heatles, their odds drop to about 12.5%. When there isn't an almost certain NBA champion in sight, the odds makers apparently lose their sight. So this really brings up the question, how do we actually predict the 2024 NBA champions? Well, we're going to do just that. After going through the long and drawn out process of finding the stats of decades worth of championship winning teams, I found a few indicators that kept showing up time and time again. 
When looking through the stats of the last 24 NBA champions, so from the year 2000 with Kobe and Shaq, all the way to 2023 with Jokic and the Nuggets, I found seven different metrics that were consistently high level between these teams. The first one is probably the most obvious thing of this video. Regular season record generally has a strong correlation to postseason success. When looking at the last decade and a half of champs, right here is every team based on how they ranked league-wide in regular season wins. The average league rank was 2.71, so right around third place in wins. The worst ranking we've ever seen a team get away with in the regular season is the 2021 Milwaukee Bucks, who placed 7th and had 46 wins in the 72-game season that year, which translates to about 52 wins in, in a normal season. When looking at these 24 teams, there's only been 6 teams that have ever been outside of the top 3 in wins and still won the NBA Finals. The 2004 Detroit Pistons, the 2006 Heat, the 2011 Mavs, the 2012 Heat, the 2021 Bucks, and the 2023 Nuggets. For wins, having a good ranking has definitely been shown to lead to postseason success, but you don't have to be perfect. Who has the best record in 2024? Well, that would be the Boston Celtics at 55-14. and 14. Mind you, these stats are accurate as of about Saturday, March 23rd. Followed by the Thunder at 48 and 24, the Nuggets at 49 and 21, the Timberwolves at 47 and 22, and the Bucks at 45 and 25. Stat number two is SRS score. SRS score is a combination of margin of victory and strength of schedule. And once again, we see a pretty strong correlation here. The average SRS rank of a champion is 3.21, so around third place in the league. As we can see, the stat is really cutthroat. Besides the 2011 Dallas Mavericks, who finished 8th in this category, we've never seen a team with a ranking higher than 6th to win the finals. So the top 6 teams in SRS this year, you ask? The Celtics at 11.27, the Thunder at 7.4, the Timberwolves at 6.57, the Pelicans at 4.86, the Nuggets at 4.79, and the Clippers at 4.14. Now stats number 3 and number 4 are offensive and defensive rating. And the reason why I'm grouping these two stats together is because of their unique relationship they have with each other. Because in general, it takes around a top 10 ranking in both categories to win a championship. But what's so unique about these stats is that you can get away with one end of the floor being below subpar if the other end of the floor is elite. For instance, the 2004 Detroit Pistons were a below average team offensively, ranking 18th in the league in offensive rating. On top of that, they were only averaging about 90 points a game, and their highest scoring individual Rip Hamilton averaged under 18 points a game that year. But it was their supreme defense that won Detroit this ring. Placing second in the league in defensive rating, the Pistons had multiple players averaging two or more blocks and had five players averaging a steal or more a game. In the postseason, they were holding teams to under 80 points a game, 79.7 to be exact. And looking at the opposite of this example is the 2023 Denver Nuggets. It was no secret that this team was carried by its elite offense that covered up their average defense. The Nuggets last year had a top 5 offensive rating, but had the 15th best defensive rating. So to combat these differences in offense and defense, and take the overall net rating of the teams, the average score is 3.4. So once again, ranked around third league-wide. Of the 24 previous champions, the highest net rating champion on here was the 2011 Mavs and the 2001 Lakers, both with a net rating of 8th place. So it generally takes a team within the top 8 places in the league in terms of net rating to really contend for a championship. And the top 8 teams in 2024, in terms of net rating you ask, well that would be the Boston Celtics at 11.7, the Thunder at 7.7, the T-Wolves at 6.6, the Pelicans at 5.0, the Nuggets at 4.7, and the Cavs, Knicks, and Clippers all at 4.1. Now the stats number 5 and 6 have a pretty similar relationship as the previous offense Offensive and defensive rating, it's offensive and defensive effective field goal percentage. Effective field goal percentage is different from your normal field goal percentage because effective accounts for three pointers being worth one more point than twos. So, teams that are good three point shooting teams are going to dominate this. It's a very similar story as the offensive and defensive ratings. In general, if you're doing pretty well in these stats, it's a good sign for winning a chip. But similar what we did with offensive and defensive rating, where we found the net rating, we can do that for effective field goal percentage. 
where we can subtract the defensive effective field goal percentage from offensive, leaving us with either a net positive or net negative number. And the top eight teams this year in this stat of net effective field goal percentage, well, that would be the Boston Celtics at plus 5.7%, the OKC Thunder at plus 4.6%, the Minnesota Timberwolves at plus 4.4%, the Denver Nuggets at plus 3.2%, the Cleveland Cavs at plus 3.1%, the Bucks also at plus 3.1%, the Suns at plus 2.9%, and the Los Angeles Clippers at plus 2.4%. And the final stat of the basic ones we're going to cover today is age. Teams that are generally older have been proven to be more effective at winning championships. The average league rank age of teams to win it all is 5.38. So they're around the fifth oldest team in the league. But the stat might be the least correlating of the seven we're going to go through. Because we've seen multiple times that teams that place outside of the top 10 in age like the Nuggets last year most recently. Heck, even the 2015 Warriors were actually considered a younger team and still won it. Because we've seen multiple teams place outside of the top 10 in age and still win it. But when taking a deeper look, 16 of the past 24 NBA champions were all within the top 5 of age in the league. Because the range contenders, according to age, is so broad, to classify the teams in 2024, I think we should put them in the three different categories of age. Optimal, which is top 5, satisfactory, which is 6 to 10, and suboptimal, which is 11 to 15. So the optimal teams in the league in terms of age, or the five oldest, are the Clippers, Bucks, Suns, Celtics, and 76ers. The satisfactory teams, or spots 6 through 10, are the Warriors, Heat, Bulls, Lakers, and Timberwolves. And the suboptimal teams, or spots 11 through 15, are the Nuggets, Mavericks, Kings, Nets, and Knicks. Let's recap these stats real quick. When looking at regular season record, the contenders are the Boston Celtics, OKC Thunder, Denver Nuggets, Minnesota Timberwolves, and Milwaukee Bucks. When looking at SRS, the Celtics, T-Wolves, Pelicans, Nuggets, and Clippers qualify. When looking at net rating, the Celtics, Thunder, Cavs, Pelicans, Nuggets, T-Wolves, Knicks, and Clippers qualify. When looking at net effective field goal percentage, the Thunder, Celtics, Cavs, Suns, Nuggets, T-Wolves, Bucks, and Clippers qualify. And when looking at age, by far the least exclusive of these stats, the Clippers, Bucks, Suns, Celtics, 76ers, Warriors, Heat, Bulls, Lakers, T-Wolves, and Nuggets all qualify. But what if there was a way to eliminate every team that doesn't qualify from each five stats? Well, if we do just that and use process of elimination, we could cross out every team but the Celtics, Timberwolves, and Nuggets. And with the Timberwolves dealing with an injury to their star player, Carl Anthony Towns and the uncertainty of his return, I think it would be hard for me to pick them as the favorites to win it all without him. So that means we can cross off the Wolves and this leaves us with two teams, the Boston Celtics and Denver Nuggets, both teams that qualify in every category according to historic championship evidence. But we're not done yet though. Looking at basic stuff, like regular season record is alright, but how about we put some more context behind this. Obviously in the postseason, you're only playing against the best teams in the league, so it only makes sense to view the performance against the best teams in the league. When looking at every playoff team's record against above 500 teams, the Celtics are by far the best ranked team, with a record of 29 and 13 against 500 or better teams. Following them are the Thunder at 25 and 14, the Nuggets at 26 and 17, the Timberwolves also at 26 and 17, and the Bucks at 23 and 17. As a matter of fact, only 8 of the 20 possible playoff teams have a winning record against good teams. The Celtics, Thunder, Nuggets, T-Wolves, Bucks, Pelicans, Pacers, and Kings. But let's take this a step farther. How about instead of looking at just teams with a winning record against good teams, how about we look at the records against the actual elite teams in the league? So let's condense this list down from simply winning teams to records against the Celtics, Bucks, Cavs, Thunder, Nuggets, Timberwolves, and Clippers. In my opinion, the seven best teams in the league. I mean, this is most likely going to be our conference semifinal teams. And when we look at the record against the top seven teams in the league, there was only five teams that actually managed to pull off a winning record. Those teams, you may ask? Well, the Oklahoma City Thunder are the best, who have an astonishing 10-4 and record against the elites. And by the way, these stats are accurate as of Saturday, March 23rd. The Kings are second at 7 and 10, then the Timberwolves at 9 and 7, the Lakers at 10 and 8, and the Bucks at 7 and 6. 
It's games like these that can actually show who can deal with the toughest competition. But how about we look at this from another angle? What about the teams that get hot at the right time? I'm talking about teams that play incredible basketball right before the start of the postseason. Let me ask another question, does this even matter towards playoff success? Well, history would say yes. When looking at the same 24 prior NBA champions we looked at earlier, the average winning percentage after All-Star break or of former champions is 69%, which is substantially higher than the average NBA record and is also around the same range as the average regular season winning percentage of these 24 teams, which is about 73% by the way. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the only team that's had a losing record from All-Star break until the postseason and still won it all was the 2022 Golden State Warriors, who had a record of 10 and 12. The best post-All-Star break run was accomplished by the 2012 and 13 Miami Heat, who had an unreal 29-2 record, putting them at a winning percentage of 93.5%. Looking at this in 2024, as of the recording right now, is the Denver Nuggets with an astonishing 13-2 record. Following them are the Celtics at 12-2, the Magic at 12-3, the Thunder at 11-3, and, and the Bucks at 10-4. In fact, these five teams are the only teams that have a winning percentage of 70% or higher post-All-Star break. More notable teams to mention are the Red Hot Houston Rockets, Rockets at 10 and 5, the Pelicans, Kings, and Warriors, who have all been playing really high quality basketball as of recent. But we're not quite done yet in our search for the 2024 NBA champion. The Oklahoma City Thunder in the 2023 and 24 season have proven to be an elite basketball squad. Currently their first in an ultra competitive Western Conference, the team has taken a giant leap from last year. Shea Gilgis Alexander is second place on the MVP ladder. Chet Holgram in his first NBA season is already one of the best rim protectors in the league. Jalen Williams is a certified bucket getter. And players like Lou Dort, Kaysen Wallace, Josh Giddy, and Isaiah Joe have all been amazing complimentary pieces. The Thunder in 2024 have the second best record against winning teams and the best record against the top 7 teams in the league. The team is firing on all cylinders, but they have one major problem. This team has absolutely no NBA postseason experience. The starting five from OKC has a combined 19 games of playoff experience, 13 of which came from Shea from the Clippers in 2019 and the Thunder in 2020, and the other six came from Lou Dort on the Thunder in 2020. Three of these five players in the starting lineup have literally zero playoff minutes, and this is slightly problematic because throughout NBA history, we've seen that playoff experience does in fact matter. When referring back to those 24 most recent NBA champions, do you want to guess the average amount of playoff games in their whole starting lineup? The average NBA championship starting five prior to winning their ring had an average of 325 previous playoff games. Yeah, that's a big difference from 19 total. In 2024, there are six teams in the league whose starting five have 300 plus playoff games under their belt. That would be the Warriors with a whopping 502 games, the Clippers with 481, the Lakers with 396, the Miami Heat with 340, the Celtics with 332, and the Bucks with 323. But the OKC Thunder aren't the only contending team that's dealing with a lack of playoff experience. I would consider any starting lineup that has under 200 prior playoff minutes to be suboptimal for truly contending for a ring. It's not a make or break thing. I mean, the Nuggets last year had only 150 prior postseason games, but a lack of playoff experience does show up during times of adversity. The Timberwolves have only 155 prior postseason games, and they're in the hunt for the one seed in the West. The Mavs have only 141 games, the Pacers have 137, the Kings are at 135, the Pelicans are at 129, the Knicks are at 115, the Cavs are at 111, and the Magic are at a measly 28 games. All examples of quality contending teams that have a lack of postseason experience. I think another way to look at this is to look at the experience from the team's number one option. Sometimes a team can get away with having role players with inadequate experience if their number one option has been through it. We see this all the time in the NBA. So when looking at this metric, that one 39 year old guy in the Lakers, yeah I think he's been to the playoffs a few times. LeBron James almost doubles the experience of the next closest player, which is Kevin Durant from the Suns, then Curry from the Warriors, Kawhi on the Spurs, Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, Giannis, Jokic, and so on. 
So after looking at these playoff experience stats, I think we can clearly separate the teams that qualify from the teams that might need a year or two before they're really ready. Right here on the left, we have teams that I would say have optimal postseason experience, and the teams left over here on the right, I would say have suboptimal postseason experience. Because when you really look close at how these teams are separated, the green teams have one big difference from the red teams, and I'm going to give you a second to guess that difference. The green team's best player has made or won an NBA Finals in the last five years. Jason Tatum made it in 2022, Devin Booker made it in 2021, Giannis won it in 2021, Jokic won it last year, Jimmy Butler made it twice in 2020 and 2023, LeBron won it in 2020, Curry won it in 2022, and Kawhi won it back in 2019. And the teams on the red? Joel Embiid has only made it to the second round. Knicks are the same story. Hawks have, the Hawks have made it to the conference finals. The Pacers have no experience. Bulls highest is first round. Same story with the Cavs. Magic have no experience. The Mavericks are in the same boat as the Hawks. The Timberwolves highest is round one. Same with the Pelicans and Kings. And the Thunder also have no experience. So the eight teams that have adequate playoff experience in my eyes are the Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, Denver Nuggets, Phoenix Suns, Golden State Warriors, LA Clippers, and LA Lakers. The Miami Heat last year completely shocked the whole basketball world, where they made it to the NBA Finals despite being an 8 seed that had to go through the play-in tournament. The Heat last year were torching some of the best teams in the East. They beat the Bucks in 5 games, beat the Knicks in 6 games, and beat the Celtics in 7 games in the Conference Finals. Jimmy Butler was unstoppable, and their role players were on a whole nother level. The Miami Heat have made 2 NBA Finals and 3 Conference Finals in the last 4 years. Do you ever just ask yourself, why? How do these underdogs figure it out in the playoffs year after year? Well, I think it's because of this guy. The man himself, Eric Spolstra, who truly doesn't get enough credit for what he's done with the lack of firepower he's had on his rosters. With that being said, coaching plays a way bigger part in playoff success than most fans realize. And history would back me up here, because championship winning rosters have historically had great coaches. Of the previous 24 NBA championship winning squads from 2000 to 2023, the career average winning percentage that these head coaches have had combined in regular season and post season basketball is a very impressive 66%. And not only are these coaches really good at winning basketball games, but most of them have lots of experience winning games in the postseason. Did you know that the average playoff experience from championship coaches prior to their ring is 110 games? However, it isn't a set in stone requirement to have loads of playoff experience because three head coaches have won without any experience. That being Steve Kerr in 2015, Ty Lue in 2016, and Nick Nurse in 2019. And eight of the nine last NBA champions have had coaches that have had less than 100 games of prior experience. And speaking of experience, not only just having playoff games under your belt is important, but having championships under your belt is also very significant. The average head coach prior to getting their ring in a given season has had, on average, 2.67 previous championships, and 15 of the 24 head coaches have had at least one prior championship. What does this mean in 2024? Well, based off several of these stats and my own knowledge of the game, I ranked the 20 NBA head coaches on playoff rosters that I believe will be the most effective come crunch time. And at a clear number one, we have Eric Spolstra from the Heat. This man has two prior championships under his belt, a career winning percentage right around 60%. What the man has achieved with Jimmy Butler rosters deserves way more praise. The guy over the last four years has been consistently beating more talented teams than his own. At number two, I would put Steve Kerr, four championships in the last nine years, a career winning percentage of 66% plenty of playoff experience. Mike Malone, Rick Carlisle, Tyron Liu, Nick Nurse, Frank Vogel, and Mike Brown, I would all have slightly trailing these two coaches. All of these six coaches have a championship under their belt, all have been to plenty of playoff games, and all have proven that they're competent enough to lead a championship contending squad. The next level of coaches I have are guys like Tom Thibodeau, Joe Mazzulla, Doc Rivers, and Jason Kidd. These four coaches still have everything to prove being a head coach in the NBA. None of them have won a championship, I mean except Doc Rivers 15 years ago, and let's just be honest, all of his choked playoff leads almost can't 
cancel that ring out. All of these coaches still need to show us that they can lead a contending team. And the final tier of coaches I have are coaches like Quinn Snyder, Billy Donovan, Darvin Ham, JB Bickerstaff, Chris Finch, Willie Green, Mark from OKC, and Jamal Mosley. All of these coaches, in my opinion, are lower tier playoff coaches that will get overshadowed by the ones above. They either have a lack of experience for me to truly gauge them higher or just no results with the experience they have. As of the current day, I believe that the Boston Celtics are going to win the 2024 NBA Finals. The team checks off pretty much every box of championship persona. The team has the regular season success, their margin of victory is insane, they're a top two team in the league in both offensive and defensive rating, and while this core doesn't have a prior championship, this team has experienced so much winning and experienced so much adversity in the playoffs that I think they'll be ready to get over the hump this year. During the summer and fall of 2023, when the Celtics traded for Drew Holiday and Chris Depps Porzingis. No one questioned the talent of the starting lineup, however people did question the new depth they would have to rely on, giving away crucial role players like Marcus Smart, Robert Williams, and Malcolm Brogdon. But I think it's safe to say that players like Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, and even Luke Cornett have all stepped up in a big way. The only weakness I see in this team is A, their post defense, and B, their front court depth. Because while the Celtics can get away with Porzingis guarding most big men in the league, the Celtics could face problems with matching up with extremely talented frontcourt players like Giannis, Jokic, and even Embiid if he comes back. The Celtics are one Kristaps Porzingis injury away from another disappointing postseason. The next biggest threat to the Celtics are either going to be the Milwaukee Bucks in the East or the Denver Nuggets in the West. I believe the Bucks are one of the few teams in the league that actually have the talent to match up against the Celtics, and the Bucks have actually looked pretty Pretty good against the Celtics this year in the first three games of the regular season. First only losing by three points in the TD Garden, then they blew out the Celtics at the five serve, and then they lost another one without Giannis. Like I mentioned before, I think a player like Giannis can give the Celtics trouble, and with an offense with Dame, Giannis, Middleton, and a bunch of high level shooters around them, if this team gets hot, they're almost impossible to match up with. But what really concerns me with the Bucks is their subpar defense and their inconsistencies. Ever since getting rid of Drew Holiday, the Bucks haven't been the same on that end, and the Bucks will go on to beat teams like the Thunder and beat the Nuggets only to lose to the Grizzlies the next game. And the other major threat to the Celtics is the Denver Nuggets, and what makes the Nuggets so scary is that they're undefeated against the Celtics in the regular season. When the Nuggets offense is going with Nikola Jokic running the show, Jamal Murray playing like a prime Kobe Bryant, Aaron Gordon being a menace around the rim, and other shooters like Michael Porter Jr. and KCP, it's almost impossible to stop them. The main weakness of this team is their defense, and while I think the Nuggets defense is better than the Bucks this season, you need an elite defense to truly stop an offensive juggernaut like the Celtics. So I would put the Celtics as my number one team and the Bucks and Nuggets as 2A and 2B. So the Boston Celtics are your 2024 NBA champions. I hope you all enjoyed. And a quick PSA, I just created a channel where I'm going to be posting clips of my longer videos and potentially YouTube shorts. So if you don't have the time or the patience to watch long videos like these ones, go over to Eddie Bucket Clips and subscribe for multiple uploads a week.